After taking the reign as Palpatine's new Sith apprentice, Darth Tyrannus or Count Dooku began training many dark disciples of his own and teaching them in the ways of the dark side. These included Asajj Ventress, Savage Opress, and even Quinlan Vos himself near the end of the Clone Wars. But what did Palpatine think about Dooku taking all of these acolytes under his teachings? Well, we now know exactly what he thought with words directly from his mouth, so let's break it down. So make sure you hit the subscribe button down below if you want to see more content directly from Palpatine's diary and pretty much his thoughts on everything. So Lucasfilm recently released a book called Secrets of the Sith, which is basically the personal journal of Palpatine where he collected his thoughts about everything from the Rule of Two, the Force Dyad, his apprentices, and even his cloning. The following entry contains his thoughts on Darth Tyrannus' apprentices and why each of them had to be swiftly eliminated. So I'll read that for you now. Darth Tyrannus took on many students despite the Sith's Rule of Two. He believed me unaware of his desire to usurp my power and position, but such ambition does not go unnoticed by a Sith Master nor does it go unpunished. Though Dooku trained his students well, none would rise to join the ranks of the true Sith. Of that, I would make certain. After that, he goes on to deliver his thoughts about the swift and deadly Asajj Ventress, realizing that she was probably Dooku's best ever trainee and probably posed the biggest threat to him out of any of them. He says, Asajj Ventress. Dooku's first disciple was perhaps his most impressive. Sold into slavery as a child, this Dathomirian found her way into the care of an accursed Jedi Knight. She trained as his apprentice, but her master's death drove her to the dark side. This led her to Darth Tyrannus. Though Asajj Ventress proved a formidable assassin, I sensed the dark power growing within her could be used against me, and so I ordered Tyrannus to kill Ventress. But the girl escaped with her life. She spent most of her remaining days seeking revenge against her former master. So right there we see that Palpatine even has some small amount of respect for Ventress, certainly enough to consider her a threat and order her assassination during the Clone Wars. The master that Palpatine is of course referring to here is Kai Narek, the man who trained Ventress before his death which eventually pushed her to the dark side. Now after that, Palpatine moves on to his thoughts about Savage Opress. He says, Savage Opress, the next disciple of Lord Tyrannus was the brother of my own fallen apprentice, Darth Maul. Savage Opress first allied with Tyrannus as part of a scheme of vengeance concocted by Asajj Ventress. But Opress's rage proved to be too strong to be contained. He betrayed both Ventress and Tyrannus, joining forces with Maul instead. Steered in secret by Mother Towson, the brothers believed themselves capable of overthrowing my reign and supplanting the Sith Order. It was a delusion I dispelled single-handedly when I defeated them in combat, slaying Opress in the process. And this is of course referring to their battle on Mandalore where Palpatine absolutely demolished the two brothers, quickly killing Savage and capturing Maul, imprisoning him in the galaxy's toughest prison on Stygian Prime called the Spire. If you want to see how he escaped from that prison, you can check the pinned comment down below where I have a full video covering the Son of Dathomir comic. It's an awesome story, so make sure you check that out. Now moving on from that, Palpatine gives his thoughts on the final of Dooku's disciples, Quinlan Boss, the legendary user of Force Psychometry and survivor of Order 66. Palpatine goes on to say, Quinlan Vos. Darth Tyrannus found his final apprentice in the unconventional Jedi Knight, Quinlan Vos. On a clandestine mission to assassinate Tyrannus, Voss forged an alliance with Asajj Ventress, and the two became romantically entwined. Voss was captured and turned to the dark side by Lord Tyrannus, becoming his dark disciple. It was a fate that Ventress could not accept. She gave her own life to help Voss escape from her former master's influence. How fitting that the death of Lord Tyrannus' first apprentice would lead to the loss of his last. And this is referring to the novel Dark Disciple, where Ventress is forced to jump in front of Count Dooku's lightning to save Quinlan Voss's life, putting an end to her own. Sadly, at this point, she is then buried on Dathomir. We know how Dathomir witches can technically come back to life in an undead state, but I doubt something like this would work for Ventress to bring her back. But yeah, let me know down below how you feel about them killing off Ventress in a book. Obviously, back then when they did it, they didn't know how many Disney Plus shows and how many new stories they were going to be able to tell, so you can't blame them really, but it would be nice if she was still alive. I'd love to see her in the Mandoverse, even though that's not possible anymore. So let me know if you enjoyed hearing words directly from Palpatine's mouth and I'll cover more content from his diary. Thanks so much for watching, really hope you enjoyed the video. Cheers guys, hope to see you in the next one.